Warning. The following video is a flop. Jackson! I am sorry to inform you that I miscalculated the timescales required to construct the following video. I have now realized that using text-to-speech software to read out a fictional timeline document about my own political and economic beliefs is rather boring. This is further pronounced due to a lack of suitable video footage to complement it, as most of the important details occur between 1945 and 1950. To counter this issue I am remodeling it into the format of a court case themed around the Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney franchise thanks to the website www.objection.lol maker. This should be more entertaining as more points will be presented combined with each character's appropriate actions. This time capsule was placed in this location on 2nd of September 1945 to celebrate the end of World War II by time travelers, whose identities shall remain anonymous. The document below is a transcript of the major historical events in our timeline, from the perspective of the writer, that have happened since the placing of this time capsule. As a result of the bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki the newly formed United Nations decided to outright prohibit any further testing of nuclear weapons. The United Nations also proposed that research regarding the use of nuclear energy as a source of heat for steam and electricity generating purposes should be available to all countries around the world who would like to invest in nuclear power. Both of these decisions resulted in the creation of the International Atomic Energy Agency, IAEA on the 25th of December 1945 in order to regulate all nuclear related information and technology to prevent a nuclear Armageddon. The United Nations formed the World Health Organization on the 18th of October 1945 which focused on setting up multilateral agreements to allow equal access to vaccines medication and other medical equipment and thus reduce the multinational effects of certain diseases. To counteract the resulting explosive population growth the WHO campaigned for improved sexual health education and the legalization of abortion to give women greater freedom for higher education and employment. The United Kingdom's National Health Service lead the charge in the more developed countries. In the wake of the Holocaust the death penalty was replaced with a 25-year life sentence in all countries. Equal rights legislation was also passed which abolished all forms of discriminatory legal practices, medical procedures and job restrictions previously deemed necessary for the greater good of mankind. The UK government took a drastic five-pronged approach to pull the economy out of the recession which entailed, mass electrification of Britain's railways, mass recycling and anaerobic digestion schemes, massive semi-Marxism themed taxes and incentives, investment in developing bicycle-friendly public transport systems and mass adoption of heat pumps and district heating. On 1 January 1946 the UK's rail industry was nationalised to form British Railways, repealing the Railway and Canal Traffic Act 1854. This sacrificed the canal industry to save the more efficient rail networks by allowing BR to turn down non-profitable traffic and thus more easily compete with the increasing number of private road haulage and bus companies. BR cancelled all orders for non-electrified locomotives and focused on its 25 kV overhead mass electrification scheme to improve train power to weight ratios. 
standardized DMUs would be used until lines were electrified when they would be retrofitted into EMUs in order to reduce the demand for new locomotives and improve existing services. These locomotives and motor units used three-phase induction motors driven from cruise control-based rotary converters to enable higher average speeds and reliability. These components were made in modular form at different appropriately suited factories to maximize the cost-effectiveness of the changeover. While electrifying routes BR upgraded signal boxes and installed track gates to identify where trains were and apply signaling appropriately. Line speeds were increased and the newly developed AWS and TPWS systems were implemented nationwide to reduce driver error and thus reduce the likelihood of rail collisions. With the freedom to pick and choose goods traffic, BR became more willing to support the use of stackable containers, large curtain-sided wagons and automated high-capacity hoppers to reduce turnaround times by speeding up goods transfer. This allowed BR to sell off land from unprofitable marshalling yards, further increasing its freedom. Recycling schemes heavily based around existing austerity measures were gradually implemented throughout the UK. They focused on increasing the recycled material content of frequently disposed products and improving product quality and service life to enable greater reuse of the products. A notable example is the forced reuse and recycling of plastic packaging, bags and utensils in order to minimize the volume of waste being disposed of via landfill and litter and the amount of oil-based products that needed to be imported. Anaerobic digestion was used as a means of turning unusable food waste into both fertilizer and methane for heating and electricity instead of feeding it to animals. Single units of this type were often fitted into neighborhoods with matching generator units. Composting was however more greatly encouraged due to the reduced complexity and material usage and the ability to be used directly on, community, gardens and allotments. Industrial composting plants used the district heating system to maximize the rate of thermal decomposition. In order to increase equality without appearing communist the UK and its empire restricted top-bottom wage differences to no more than 30 times in all companies. Despite initial uproar this provided a massive boost to the UK's GDP and helped provide funding for more equality improving objectives. Many countries experimented with reducing demand for highly addictive drugs using clinics, public education and psychologists. These experiments were highly successful long term as more people were free to support the economy rather than lose money to illegal drug dealers. This combined with the not-for-profit restrictions on medication manufacturers and others on hemp growing based on THC concentration to very effectively minimize the collective debt of drug dealing on the global economy due to the monopoly over unlicensed dealers. To prevent the UK from becoming car-centered while not restricting automobile access the UK government altered the driving regulations so that cars were required to give way to public transport wherever safe to do so if road signs didn't state otherwise. The UK government decided on a blanket national speed limit of 60 miles per hour for all road vehicles on major roads and 30 miles per hour in built-up areas. Plans for special roads, aka, motorways, were replaced with incentives to reduce public transport waiting times and balance service competition and availability. In order to further incentivize public transport, local businesses and reduce road-based incidents and fuel consumption, a major investment was made into increasing the compatibility between bicycles and the three target forms of transportation trams, trolleybuses and railways. This often comprised of folding seating to provide space for bike racks. Countries with hot deserts used concentrated solar thermal energy as the main source of heat and electricity. This allowed electrification, especially regarding transportation, to become more economical due to not having to burn fuels in an already hot climate, reducing the demand for air conditioning. 
research into gyrodons and other types of vital capable autogyros was conducted to increase helicopter speed and efficiency. Their advantages of payload, range and vital capabilities soon made them highly useful for emergency services, fire, policing, coast guard and air ambulances, along with certain low-speed military applications. District heating was heavily encouraged in the UK to reduce electricity, fuel demand which would allow the conversion to nuclear to be more cost-effective. This helped reduce smog in major cities as fuels could be burned hotter and more efficiently producing fewer toxic fumes such as carbon monoxide. Stirling-based heat pump designs that used highly abundant hydrogen as a working fluid were readily mass-produced in the UK to reduce the energy consumption required for the district heating pipework due to lower average temperatures and lower thermal losses. Heat pumps were also combined with specialized water tanks with water-level-based temperature controls that flexibly offered both the advantages of tank and tankless water heaters. These therefore allowed much lower energy consumption due to minimizing the heating of water not being used. The following diagram shows the thermodynamic properties of the highly efficient boiler and how it minimizes excessive heating of unused water. Also shown is the operating principle of the Stirling engine heat pumps that drove them. Emitters of waste heat such as stationary engine exhausts, power stations and industrial processes were retrofitted with heat pump assisted condensers linked to the district heating systems to recycle as much energy as possible. By 1960, despite the general lack of nuclear research, half a percent of the UK's power production was nuclear. Modular and compact reactor designs were also being developed to allow for easy retrofitting of coal power plants to nuclear due to their nearby rail links. 
the molten salt reactor designs were some of the most promising due to their passive control systems and ability to convert existing nuclear waste into large amounts of useful power due to their low working pressure for their temperature. Their only design limitation was the unknown on effects of high temperature radioactive salts on container walls. Between 1960 and 1974 of the UK's coal power plants were converted to nuclear power while another 3% were converted to natural gas in retaliation against the miners' strikes. This rate of progress would continue for many years. In 1973 the UK and the Netherlands started working together to further improve cyclist and pedestrian safety due to public uproar in the Netherlands and the brewing oil crisis. Soon most countries had caught on to the idea in order to reduce road deaths and congestion. During the 1970s global fuel crisis research into alternatives to fossil fuels skyrocketed with major developments in low-cost wave, salt as duck and wind, kite-based, energy. MSRs proved themselves at providing basic load stabilization to the grid as their passive control systems allowed heat generation to easily match the demand from the turbines. Cycling and electric public transport became more popular as people looked for ways to continue their daily lives without relying on fossil fuels. This caused many countries to invest more heavily in electrifying public transport and nuclear power to overcome the sudden demand. The Dynorwig Hydroelectric Power Station, also known as Electric Mountain, was built in North Wales in the 1970s to provide a stable pumped storage medium for the fluctuations in the power grid. The Festiniog and Padden, Lanbaris Lake railways occupying the site received large amounts of compensation for the need to divert their track work to continue running their tourist trains. In 1981, European laws surrounding unethical forms of intensive animal farming were revised so that smaller farms became more economical and safer. A major part of these laws was to reduce the use of costly antibiotics by using preventive measures like vaccines or reducing animal density. Similar measures for plant-based farms were also experimented with. During the 1980s the UK government started investing heavily in connecting businesses and communities with fibre optic communication to reduce power losses and latency from long-distance internet. This helped reduce international travel and reduce global fuel consumption. Logging companies were forced to reduce their rate of deforestation by openly publishing where they had cut each tree from and having to replant appropriately suited trees in the deforested environment to counteract their environmental destruction. A major tackling of monocultures was enforced to ensure forests could survive the increased pollutants in the atmosphere. As cameras and other computer components became smaller and more efficient, most countries began permitting the use of dash cams and interior cameras in public transport systems and emergency service vehicles in order to help increase public safety and security. In 1991 the Soviet Union officially fell, caused by uproar against the USSR's hypocritical neglect for democracy due to corruption and poor political management of socialism. This coincided with a major international conference regarding the increasing rate of global warming and its correlation to population wealth and density in order to find the most effective solutions to global warming and major inequality. As part of the plan many countries were encouraged to massively reduce their annual military spending to less than 1% of their GDP in order for economies to invest more heavily in tackling the accelerating inequality caused by global warming. During the late 1990s graphene production became the forefront of industrial research and development due to its high suitability in reducing the weight of concrete and other composite structures. A large part of this was the newfound ability to turn highly abundant poor quality coal into graphite and graphene sheets which vastly reduced the cost of graphene production. On 31 December 2019 an outbreak of a corona-shaped virus dubbed COVID-19 was officially recorded in China. 
By 30 Jan the WHO declared that the virus had the potential to cause a pandemic due to the alarming infection rate in China caused by airborne transfer. The UK, along with other countries, took immediate steps to prepare itself for a national lockdown to prevent serious spread of infection. Due to people having to distance themselves from each other, the use of public transport was severely restricted causing a major increase in cycling for both exercise and commuting, the latter was prioritized for key workers. Thankfully the use of fiber optic and Wi-Fi helped reduce the unemployment factor as companies slash individuals adapted to working from home. Most, if not all, countries' economies stalled as they were forced to pay out large sums of money to those who couldn't work during the pandemic. Thankfully most countries' rapid response to the pandemic and frequent testing of individuals meant that the majority of the pandemic was over by July 2020. Unfortunately certain restrictions still applied until April 2021 when sufficient numbers of people had been vaccinated to significantly reduce the rate of infection. With ideas taken from the lockdown restrictions all countries pushed towards carbon negativity by encouraging the use of sustainable livelihoods. This time capsule message is a fictional story created to explore how prioritization of public transport and nuclear power instead of nuclear weapons could have changed the timeline for the better. For those who haven't noticed, as a British citizen I envy the Netherlands for the obstination from car-centered cities in the 1970s as I blame cars for the downfall of rail transportation and trams oh, in the and UK. By the way. Thank you for watching. Please feel free to leave comments below and subscribe to the channel for future episodes. In fact, you have to subscribe. Resistance.